Welcome back. So on this segment of Women We Love, uh, we have a guest. She's an award-winning journalist, academic consultant, and a co-founder of African Women in Media, AWIM. She also holds a PhD in Media and Cultural Studies from Birmingham City University, where she's a senior lecturer. She has published scholarly research on women's rights, African feminism, journalism, and digital public spheres. Welcome with us, Dr. Yemisi Akimbobola. Good morning, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Thank How you for you having today? me. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. I'm very well, thank you. And hello from Fez, Morocco. Okay. Wow. So you wow. have an amazing profile, an amazing CV. Uh, just quickly tell us um, why you decided to go into media and how has the journey been so far? Wow, okay. Um, well, I, after my first degree in creative arts from the University of Major Degree, I did a master's in media production. I think in that time I entered at CNN and a few other media organizations. Okay, so I think those, those experiences in those organizations really sealed the importance of the media and the kind of role that I would like to play in it. So when I finished my PhD in 2010, I set up my first media organization, which was IQ for news and it was a website it was a it was a news website that covered Africa or global issues from African perspectives and really this was before all the big names now we have tech cabal and so many other big platforms that do that but that, I, I think at the time I was one of the first few people to set up an online news um, organization that focused on Africa um, but then I finished that in, I ended that in 2015, 2016, um, at which point our last project, which was an investigative um, story on player trafficking, so the trafficking of young West African football mm -hmm. players by fake football agents, mm -hmm. and that won the CNN African Journalism Award. Yeah. So it was then that I then started moving towards the work that I do now with AWIM, which is really trying to achieve gender equality in and through the media, because I had a lot of experience as a media owner, a female media owner, yeah. um, that I wanted to share with the world, but then also then realized that actually there's a lot of experience that women have, that it's, you know, biased, and, and so I wanted to have an impact in that area. Mm. Amazing. Dr. Um, Yemi, so see, me, I know this. So, yes. You know, I what what I know about you was the CNN's um, um, Sports Reporting Award in 2016. Okay. And so... Yes. That's how I fell in love with you. Can you tell no. us what exactly <laughs> was the, what opened your eyes or what made you do that particular report? Did you that find out anything? Story. Did you come in contact with anybody? Yeah. What exactly was the interest? Yeah, I mean, so that story was in response to a funding call by the Journalism Fund EU. And so they were looking for different angles on reporting on illicit finance. So that's the illicit flow of money internationally. And so we're used to the usual political corruption and those kind of stories, but I wanted to actually look at it from a different angle. So I started looking at football, right? And looking at the illicit finance that, that works in the football industry, because you there's a lot of um, illegal, well, there's a lot of under the board kind of structures in terms of management and how the flows of finance works between, for example, as a West African footballer going to play Manchester United and does the money come back home because it's, it's part of our kind of um, a movement of our talent to the western part of the of the, of the world you know so but in that process i then uncovered this whole world of fake football agents and we then identified a story in lagos of a group of i think about 12 young boys some under the age of 12 that were trafficked by this agent from lagos to cameroon oh. Oh. Um, and then left in the bush for, for months you know wow. and i think only a few of them came back so that story then opened my eyes to this new world of kind of fake agents and also we then looked at the regulations by FIFA and then what happens when a, you know, when a young boy from Lagos is taken to Barcelona, for example, to try out what happens after that. And the truth is that they're left to their own devices, you oh. know, and if they don't make, if they don't make the team and a lot of them end up destitute and there's no, there's wow. very little charities that are out there to support them. So okay, that was just, so the story was time. one of those ones that then uncovered so many things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd like to get in more questions. Yes. So, okay. um, <laughs> you know, Sometimes when you look through your CV and all the work that you have done, and for me, the first thing was, oh, this is amazing. She must have schooled abroad, you know, at your first degree. And I see you started at Unimade. And sometimes, yes. especially for young girls now, we look to the, you know, they're looking to their challenges, all the things that, make, that makes it difficult to achieve their dreams. What would you say has helped you push on 
to keep accomplishing what you've been accomplishing and um, just being who you are today? What has helped you, so, um, motivated you? I think, first of all, I've had a lot of great examples. My grandmother, my mother, in terms of perseverance and kind of always looking out for the other person. Um, I think having my own lived experiences in the industry and media and wanting to make sure that those coming behind me do not have to experience the kind of hurdles that I had to go through. So I think that's my motivation. It's like, I'm always thinking, okay, how do I help YMC of 10 years ago, of 20 years ago, to make sure that the experience is in trying to achieve her dream, it's easier for her. So that's my motivation. And anytime I hear that I've had any kind of impact or that I would have had any kind of impact to somebody in terms of their career aspiration, yeah. um, you know, it's always a pleasure for me, especially in an environment where kind of where women are, are asked to be subordinates, we're asked to give up so much of ourselves, our dreams and stuff, and just creating an environment where everybody's aware of the detrimental impact of asking people to give up their, their dreams. Okay, what's uh, final an environment question where, you, Yeah, um, sure. your story on the um, footballers really impressed me. The, did you, and, and you uncovered a lot of um, yeah. bad things, mm -hmm. do you think it has changed, what you uncovered, do you think it has changed the narrative? And I hear that you're, from what you said, you're in Morocco at the moment. There, is, uh, uh, there are some stories about the Moroccan government. Is that what you're doing there, about what is happening to African people? In Morocco. In Morocco. Black. When they're trying to cross over. Yeah. So, I mean, the work, what we're here for is for our annual conference, the African Women in Media Conference. And it's an annual conference that will go to different African countries to highlight the gender equality issues in the media in different regions of the continent. So that's what we're really here for um, over on Thursday and Fridays when the conference will hold. And, we, you know, there's a lot of speakers coming from all over the world, from Rwanda, South Africa, Nigeria, China, America, um, convening in, in that objective of gender equality quality in and through the media, because we all understand the role of media in terms of representation, in terms of narratives, as you said, and in terms of the ability to change citizens' perspectives and hold power to account. So our focus is on gender equality in and through the media, and um, both for the women that work in the media, but also in terms of how African women are represented in media content. Okay. And we have a whole series of kind of panels and workshops around um, that topic. Thank you so much, Dr. Yemisi. We hope to have you again so that yes. we'll have more time and Please. ask you very personal questions, how yes. you're managing everything <laughs> and managing your special, special relationships, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Thank you so much, lady. I understand. Yeah. Thank you so much for having take. me. It's a pleasure. You're welcome. All we can take on the show today. Don't forget to come support me at uh, Mr. Sold Out Life in Oba today. <laughs> I'm going to be there for 10 whole days selling my ways. I love you guys, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you.